Okay, so in this talk, we are going to look at two important and simple identities regarding inverses in groups. So right now we are in groups, which means we use all the shorthand notation for groups. We don't put stars, we just write the multiplication as strings, and because it's associative, we don't have to parenthesize. So the first law says it's a reversal law. So both of these together are sometimes uh, used to say the inverse map is involutive, though that's sometimes just used for the second one, but actually both of them together say it's involutive. So the reversal law says the inverse of a product is the product of the inverses in reverse order. Okay? Hmm? Mm -hmm. What would the version of this with just product of two things say? So that would just say AB inverse is B inverse A inverse, right? Okay, but we are just doing N things directly. So let's try to prove the reversal law first. So how would you prove it? Well, to prove that two things are inverse of each other, you just prove that when you multiply them, you get the identity. Okay, so let's multiply them. So times this thing. Okay, what's this? Well, you can drop the parentheses first, right? Okay, now what happens? Now, A and A and inverse is the identity element, right? But the, if, you have, if the identity element appears inside a word, you can just sort of drop it, right? Because it doesn't affect anything. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. So, so that A and, you can almost think of it like A and A inverse, you can cancel these with each other. Now, once you cancel these, then you'll, you'll have A1, the product will just go up to A and minus 1, and the inverse will just start from A and minus 1. Right? Mm. Now, again, these two you can cancel with each other, mm. that the product becomes identity, and because identity doesn't affect anything, you can just drop it from the word. Okay? So whenever an, an, something and its inverse appear next to each other, you can sort of cancel them. Okay? And you can keep going like this till your final step will be A1, A1 inverse, which is the identity. Right? Mm -hmm. So you see that when you multiply these two, you get the identity because you basically uh, sort of cancel them one at a time. Okay? And you see now why, why was it important to write them in reverse order? Hmm? Yeah. Why? Because it's also associative, not commutative. Not commutative. So if the if you hadn't hadn't written them in reverse order, you wouldn't have been able to find something and it's inverse next to each other. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need. You need something and it's inverse next to each other in order to be able to cancel them. Okay. Now, if you wanted to write the proof formally, you would do it by induction and all. But this is quite simple, so I'm not doing it that way. Okay. What's the next thing I have to prove? The second thing: apply twice and get back. Oh, by the way, before I go on. I should say this, so so you can actually also check that it's a two-sided inverse. So you can check the other one also, the proof. Okay, and the proof will go exactly the same way. Okay? Right? Uh, however, you actually don't need to check this separately because one of the things you remember is that in a in a in a any monoid the left if a left inverse exists and a right inverse exists they're equal right mm -hmm. so if you have in a group you know that two sided inverses do exist so any right inverse is actually a two sided inverse right because you know there's a left inverse and they have to be equal so actually it's enough to just check one of these conditions not you don't need to separately check both of them okay mm -hmm. but you can it's not hard so, so what did I say? I said that if uh, if you've checked that that this element is a right inverse for this, since it's a group, you know that that there's a two-sided inverse, which means you know there's a left inverse, but you know that any left inverse and any right inverse have to be equal. So therefore, once you've checked that this is a right inverse, it also follows that it's a left inverse. Okay, but you can check it separately, so not a big deal. And apply twice and get back. Okay, so let's let's do this a little more explicitly. So let's say B equals to A inverse. Okay, 
what do you want to show? Hmm? So you want to show this A inverse inverse is this. So we want to show that B inverse is A, right? Well, what does this mean? So B equals A inverse means that what? A B equals B A equals the identity, right? Just call it E for identity. Uh, but this is exactly what it means to say A equals B inverse, right? Because actually what's happening is that B being a right inverse for A is the same as A being a left inverse for B. And B being a left inverse for A is the same as A being a right inverse for B. But since it's two-sided, that left-right distinction doesn't matter. So we get... Okay? Actually, this one didn't use associativity, so this is actually true. Whenever you have something as a two-sided inverse, the two-sided inverse itself, the two-sided inverse of that is the original thing.